Hey, my name is Matt Hoops. I play guitar for Reliant K. And here in uh, Chicago at the House of Blues, going to show you my gear. Um, this is my favorite guitar, my number one. This is the dude right here, the lady, as you say. Uh, it is a 73 Telecaster Deluxe. And I happened upon it at a shop in Nashville and made a very low ball offer. And uh, it was one of those instruments I just picked up and I was, I just connected with it immediately. And uh, I don't know, I try not to get too sentimental with gear, uh, but this one is special to me. And uh, it sounds different, feels different, plays different than any Telecaster Deluxe from this era that I've ever heard. So that's, uh, I don't know, just something about it uh, really resonated with me and it's kind of become part of my sound. I've only owned this guitar about three years. Um, so I've owned other Telecaster Deluxes before and I've never really loved them. Um, I wasn't after this type of guitar. Um, when we started uh, as a band, I started off on a Telecaster and then moved more into Les Pauls. And then, uh, so this is kind of like my out of Les Paul stage is this guitar. And then I've been playing, you know, Stratocaster and Jaguar uh, are the main sounds on our new record. These are the original uh, Seth Lover wide range humbucker, it's called. It's like a split single coil, technically. So normally there would be six poles on each side uh, going out of phase, which would cause like a humbucking pickup like in a Les Paul. Uh, this has only three on each side, um, which split against, against each other, uh, creating the humbucking effect. But it just has a very interesting sound. Um, and like I said, this one sounds different than any I have ever heard. I don't know what it is. It's um, my friend just used it on a metal record and I was talking to them and I was like, hey man, you, you got to try that Tele Deluxe because they were just trying all different types of guitars and they were like, no man, we're making a metal record and uh, I came back to the house and sure enough they were using it, they used it on the entire record. So it's, it's very wide range, it's very beautiful sounding, you know, up here in the neck and then it's, uh, when it goes down it's, it's just mean, you know, it has like a good punch to it. I play about 90% of the set just on the bridge pickup. Um, when I go to like more chill or like indie sounding songs, I'll sometimes switch to both. And I very rarely go middle because I have my sound set pretty warm for this pickup. Um, so when I go up here normally I'm just like all low end so it's, it's more difficult to use in a live setting. I, I don't really use knobs. Uh, I normally leave them all in 10. There's a volume and tone for each one. Uh, I've had friends that have had good luck with uh, pulling back either one. Uh, but this guitar, like I said, this guitar for whatever reason, just it just sounds good. Full on. I use just regular Ernie Ball uh, 11 to 48 gauge strings. Uh, I like that slightly thicker gauge because we tune, most of our songs are tuned down half a step, so we play an E flat and I like to be able to dig in a little bit more on the on the thicker strings. Uh, I'll start off with the volume pedal. Uh, my friend Roman uh, has a company called Schnobletone and he started doing this thing where he um, put a TC Electronics Polytune into this volume pedal, this Ernie Ball volume pedal. So it's a very cool idea. Uh, it saves, I get an extra space for pedal on the board and uh, it sounds great. Um, so my order of effects, um, I actually have a buffer on the front and on the back of the board. Um, and those are made by Sir. And then coming out of the volume pedal, we'll go to this. Uh, my friend Christian made this. Uh, it's Adventure Audio Fuzz Peaks. And it just gets nasty and awesome. And it has this really cool knob that just makes a loud screeching noise when you hit it. Uh, going to the Big Ear Loaf, uh, my friend Grant makes this pedal. This is an amazing sounding, uh, kind of like working man's fuzz overdrive. Uh, it has a really cool clean, it, it cleans up really well when you play softly. Uh, I love to use it on top of whatever else I'm using as just like a fat lead boost, that kind of thing. Uh, but it also sounds great on its own. Um, and then going to the Phase 90, I just recently added this on, I redid my board recently, and I added it back on because I fully overused this effect during like our mm -hmm album, uh, even the five score record. It was one of the only effects pedals I have and I just used it on a lot of songs, so uh, 
I kind of got sick of it after that, but I recently added it back on because it was it was kind of fun. I just felt happy when I was able to turn it on. Um, this pedal is this idea is one of the most like integral parts of my sound. It's a boost. Um, all it is is just like a level boost, but it does more than that. It's, it makes it dirtier. It hits the amps harder, and then also it hits these three pedals uh, much harder. Uh, so it changes the characteristic of those pedals. Um, I love a lot of different boost pedals. This one is amazing though. Uh, it is very well thought out and I really enjoy how it sounds. This is a 1981 Tube Screamer. Uh, I've played many vintage Tube Screamers and again this one just sounds different than all of them. It's very uh, wide sounding. The bass is amazing. Uh, it's very clear, uh, it just sounds good. It's the maybe the best sounding overdrive I've ever heard, is this one. Um, so I have it on here. I normally don't take it out on the road, uh, but I recently redid my board and decided to try it out for a bit, so. Um, I have been into all sorts of mods from Tube Screamers to Rats, and this is my favorite Tube Screamer, it's a 1981, and this is my favorite Rat, it's a 1985, and they're both just stuck, and I don't know exactly what makes them sound so good, but they both sound amazing, and uh, I'm really happy with those. Uh, this is one I definitely want to talk about, my friend Jono uh, makes this puddle, uh, it's the Bondi Sickass, and it kind of has some Klon-ish tendencies to it, uh, kind of that boosted, mid-rangey, um, uh, our producer says it kind of has a beak on it, is uh, what he says. And uh, I think it's a very great pedal. I think John is a genius, and I think this pedal is uh, very integral in our sound. I use it for most of the Forget Not Slow Down era, um, this kind of like light game, clear but also brash kind of sound. Um, and then. Oh, I can also mention I use the Tube Screamer mainly on our new songs uh, because that's this, this is the actual pedal I used on most of the guitars on our new record. Um, the Rat pedal I mainly use for all my high gain stuff. Uh, this one sounds rad and I use it for the mm -hmm era. Uh, just mainly like that big kind of rock Marshall, I don't know, kind of sound. Um, I recently picked up the trifecta of three of the hardest boss pedals to find, most sought after, uh, and I love the slow gear, I love the look of it, um, and it just kind of does this like reverse volume swell attack kind of thing, It's a, these, these are all three like 1980s Japanese boss pedals, and they're just fun, I don't, I don't need them to play a show, but it makes the show a lot more enjoyable, so um, this one is just a very simple volume effect, uh, and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, this one's a vibrato, which is kind of like a chorus, but it's it just is this weird kind of uh, pitch bendy, uh, strange modulating thing. And then this dimension C, it's very interesting. Uh, it uh, again, kind of like a chorus, but it has its own feel to it. And I, I feel very happy when I turn on either one of these pedals. It just feels like a throwback into the '80s. Um, this next one, the BitQuest, this one actually does nine different effects. I put this on here to, uh, um, because I wanted a flanger. I don't know why I wanted a flanger, I just kind of wanted a flanger. Um, but it also does really cool fuzz, uh, reverb, um, a bunch of different things. And that's Dr. Scientist, who I have not met yet, but he is, uh, makes good stuff. So I really like that one. Um, Spaceman Voyager is super fun. I wish I could play it for you. It, uh, it's a tremolo and it is very sensitive to how you're playing. So it either fades away when you're done playing or it, it goes harder and faster the harder you play. So it's very sensitive to how you're playing. Super fun. Um, I love turning that pedal on to you. Um, we get into the delays and then reverbs. The tonal recall is an amazing analog delay. It does about a million things. I use it for about three things, and it does it really well. It sounds great. Uh, attention to deta detail on this is amazing. I just picked this up before this tour, and it kicked off a delay pedal that I had had on for about two years, so that one's really fun. Um, this one, the Kilobyte, is an 8-bit delay, so it just makes everything crazy, uh, and kind of has the, almost like Nintendo-ish 80s distorted kind of sound and this one has a really fun button on it too where you can hit it 
and it just makes all sorts of crazy noises. This pedal is probably the main effect on our new record. Um, you can hear it all over the place. Um, Mr. Black Supermoon, um, hands down my favorite reverb, super interesting. It makes all other reverbs sound like they're not even on. It's beautiful, it's very useful in the majority of our set. Um, and then this last one, uh, Tom Tomcat Pedals. Uh, it's a very, very cool um, delay slash reverb. I'm not using much of the delay right now, uh, but it's this very cool, like, subtle end of the chain kind of thing. And then also you can hold down on this switch and it stays, uh, your sound kind of continues on. So then all that out to two amps. This is a Top Hat Vanderbilt. Uh, it's kind of a Marshall slash Vox. Uh, hybrid, um, amazing amp. I picked this up on the Forget Not Slow Down record, and that is probably the main amp on that record. Uh, it just sounds good. You just turn it on, and it sounds awesome. Uh, very interesting sound, and it sounds different than most amps that I've heard, even boutique amps. Um, so, very cool amp. Uh, and then this one, I just picked up before this tour. There are only two of these in existence, and the other one is Dust, uh, Dustin from Thrice Owns. And uh, <clears throat> I met Nick from New Vintage a while ago. We bought cabs from him. I was very happy with the cabinets and just started talking to him about amps. And so Matt and I, right at the beginning of this tour, picked up these amps. And um, I mean, I cannot speak highly enough. Uh, I'm not super into boutique amps. I'm not super into like new amps. I prefer old and weird and interesting amps that have a story and you know all that stuff but this one is very very special and um it's very cool and, and again it's like a pretty limited thing that he's doing um where he will likely uh start to make more uh, for general consumption but um it is a very cool sound and our sound guy you know to like people uh compliment this amp constantly uh, especially when i switched it out because it was very noticeable from my vintage Marshall um, to switching out to this one was, was a huge switch. Um, so this is the one I was on before, it's a 77 Marshall, very cool. Uh, good sounding amp, but again, the new vintage was just on another level, so. Hey, thanks so much for checking out our gear. Um, be sure to uh, check out our new record, Air For Free, because there's a lot of pretty guitars on it. Thanks.